Another type of simple harmonic oscillator that we're going to study is the pendo rule. So we can actually apply a lot of the principles we learned about springs when, when studying these systems as well. Uh, what we're studying is what we assume to be a simple pendulum. So we're making an assumption that the string that the pendulum is on has no mass, um, and that will only work with small angles, so within about 15 degrees on either side when I pull it. Um, so like a spring, uh, a pendulum right, generally is, is, is at rest. Currently, so it's, it's net force is zero, its forces are in balance here, it's in equilibrium. Um, but we can take a pendulum and we can lift it, thus giving it uh, potential energy. And like a spring, when I let it go, there is a restoring force that brings this pendulum, it's trying to always bring it back to its central position. So let's think about a few of the different factors that may affect the uh, period of motion for for a pendulum. So we can study a few different things. Currently, you can see my ruler. Uh, you, you can probably tell right now I'm not in my lab, um, but the great thing about classical physics is you can use everyday objects to, to study the principles of, of physics. So behind my pendulum here, I have my ruler uh, on the wall. So it's currently set at about 30 centimeters. And I have my stopwatch here and my computer and my scale to do our weighing. So currently I have the tennis ball. So let's think about a couple of factors that can affect a pendulum motion. Um, things you might change, the length of the pendulum, uh, the mass of the object on the pendulum, uh, the amplitude. So let's, let's test a couple of these. Let's start with the amplitude. So what I'll do is, is let's start with a rather, you know, large, but keeping it within our, our, our smaller, better 15 degrees. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to count five swings of the motion um, on my clock. Okay, and we'll see what we get as a time uh, and see if the amplitude has any effect on the period of motion. So one, two, four, five. Okay, so I get about 5.75 seconds. Now let's decrease this amplitude. So we're just going to make a, a very small one now, and I'll reset my clock here and get ready to start my timer again. So we'll let it fall at a small amplitude. Five, so about 5.56 seconds. So within uh, my own reaction time uh, uh, error here, it's actually pretty close. So it doesn't appear the amplitude has much of an effect on the uh, period of motion. And again, if I took a larger sample size, of course, this is largely due to random error that we're dealing with. If I took a larger sample size, um, we, we, we'd see the numbers getting uh, closer and closer within that random error. Uh, so let's make another test. So uh, amplitude, not much of anything. How about if we change the mass on the pendulum? So again, that's about 5.5 to 5.75 seconds. So I'm going to switch it off here. So just, just so we can see the mass. Uh, a tennis ball, if I put it on my kitchen scale, I'm getting about uh, 80, 80 grams or so. Okay, so I'm going to switch that to uh, this weight that I have. And the weight is about 800 grams. So the mass of this angle weight um, about 10 times the amount of the tennis ball. So let's throw that up here on our pendulum. Okay, so it's hanging. Hopefully this will stay swinging straight still. I'm going to pull it up. Now we know the amplitude doesn't affect it, uh, so I'm not too worried about the amplitude anymore. Let's reset our timer and let this swing. So one, two, three, Four, five, and we get about 5.89 seconds. So again, within the random error of my own judgment um, of stopping this, it's approximately the same time as the tennis ball. So what else can we change here? I'm gonna put the tennis ball back on. See, mass doesn't have much of an effect. So we have our, we change the mass, 
Um, we changed the amplitude. Neither seemed to have much of an effect. Let's try changing the length. Which are almost, almost half its length. As you can see, it's about half up the ruler now. Um, so let's try this again. See if length has an effect on the pendulum. So I'll start it into simple harmonic motion. Two, three, four, five. And we get 4.12 seconds. Okay, so it appears that length, this is a whole more than a second shorter from the previous ones we're getting. So it does appear that length has an effect on uh, simple harmonic motion of a pendulum. And so amplitude and mass do not, but length does. Um, and in fact, as, as we'll see in a moment when we jump in to look at some math from this, there is one other thing that has an effect on simple harmonic motion, but I can't actually test that here, and that's gravity. So if we were to bring this same pendulum to the moon, for example, uh, we would see that the uh, period of motion does change if we keep everything else constant. So now let's jump in and look at some of the math involved uh, with the pendulum. Okay, so let's now look at some of the math involved behind the simple uh, harmonic motion and pendulums now that we've seen what they look like in, in real life. Um, so with our pendulum, we actually studied these a little bit in our energy unit, um, but we have our pendulum, which of course swings back and forth in simple harmonic motion based on a given angle. Okay, so we looked in our energy unit on calculating, uh, using this angle to figure out the height of the pendulum um, to figure out its potential energy to then calculate its kinetic energy when it's at the bottom. Um, but what we're going to look at now is, is more studying the simple harmonic motion of it and the period of it swinging back and forth and, and how we can figure that out. Like springs, if you think about it, when you bring the pendulum up to its top point, it, uh, it has a restoring force. In this case, it's, it's using some gravity and, and tension to pull this back to the middle point. This is its equilibrium um, at the bottom. Okay, where all of the forces are equal, when you bring it up, so that restoring force will bring it back. If, like in springs, we take a graph of its restoring force versus its distance, we will find that the uh, graph is linear in terms of the restoring force. Okay, and the slope of that graph we find is equal to the force of gravity uh, on the pendulum divided by the length of the pendulum, or we can rearrange to mg not rearrange, but substitute to uh, mg over L. So this is what we find the slope is equal to. So we have this relationship here, just like a spring, we have this constant that's related to a particular pendulum that we're using based on the mass and the length and the, the gravitation or the uh, gravitational pull of, of wherever we happen to be. If we take this and we look at our spring equation that we used previously for period, so we had our period is equal to two pi times the square root of m over k. If we substitute our k here in for our k uh, in the period equation, we end up with period is equal to 2 pi times the square root. The masses end up canceling out, and we're left with the square root of length divided by gravity. So this is our equation we can use to determine the period of a spring or sorry, of a pendulum. There are more uh, elegant ways, of course, to derive that, that pendulum constant, we'll call it k, um, but we're gonna stick with this. This is all we need to work with for now. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Um, so the first example, what is the period and frequency of a 1.2 meter long simple pendulum on Earth? Again, a reminder, a simple pendulum is one where we uh, ignore the mass of the string that the pendulum's on, as well as keep the angle small, so within about 15 degrees on either side of the pendulum. So in this question, um, we're starting with, we have the length of the pendulum is 1.2 meters, um, and it's on Earth, so we know our, our gravitational constant is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, we need to find the period and the frequency. So we can use our period equation we just uh, just learned, which is 2 pi times the square root of length over gravity. Um, plugging in our numbers, we get 2 pi times the square root of 1.2 divided by 9.8. Uh, plugging this on, on a, a calculator, 
will give you about 2.2 seconds for the period. And we're also asked to find the frequency. So again, a frequency just like springs in any simple harmonic motion or any, any time we're relating frequency to period. Frequency is 1 over the period. We've got 1 divided by 2.2. Um, for a result of 0 0.45 hertz. A second example, what length would you need to make a pendulum for it to have a period of one second? Um, to be convenient, if you're ever lost in the woods without a, without a timepiece, you can actually make a simple pendulum using the length we'll solve here uh, to keep track of time. So here we're given, we're, we're searching for our length in this question. We're given our period is one second. And again, we're assuming we're on Earth, so our gravitational constant will be 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so we're using our period equation for pendulums, 2 pi times the square root of length over gravity. Um, fill in our, our period. times our length over 9.8. Okay, now we need to solve for length, which is underneath that square root, so we will have to do a little bit of rearranging. So first, uh, dividing both sides by your 2 pi will give us 0 0.1592 uh, is equal to length over 9.8. We then want to square both sides. Okay, squaring both sides, we'll get rid of our, our square root there. And after squaring, uh, we will multiply by our 9.8 to remove that to find a length of about 0 0.248 meters. So if you ever need to keep time, make a pendulum with a length of about 0.25 or a quarter of a meter, um, and that will keep time at approximately one second intervals. So our final example here, a simple uh, 50 centimeter long or half a meter long pendulum on Mars makes 11 swings in 25 seconds. Use this information to determine the acceleration due to gravity on Mars. So you can actually use pendulums uh, knowing the length and just by tracking how uh, their period of motion and determine the gravity on oh, the anywhere, really. Um, so let's see. Let's write down again. I always start with what we start with. 0 0.50 meter length. Um, we It makes 11 swings in 25 seconds. So that's our number of cycles is 11 cycles in 25 seconds is our time. Okay, so with this information, we can use this to calculate the uh, frequency. So we know frequency is equal to number of cycles over the time. Or you could directly calculate period as well by inverting this fraction. Um, but we get 11 over 25, and that gives us a frequency of 0 0.44 hertz. Okay, we then find our period by taking 1 over the frequency, or 1 over 0 0.44, uh, which gives us 2.27 seconds. And finally, we can fill in our gravitation or our, our period equation searching for gravity this time. So period is equal to 2 pi square root of length over gravity. Okay, our period we have 2.27 seconds is equal to 2 pi square root of 0 0.50 uh, there should be another zero on there, zero meters over G. Okay, we're going to start by rearranging similar to the last one, dividing both sides by uh, 2 pi. Uh, gives us 0 0.3613. I am rounding the decimals here. 0 0.5 over gravity. Square both sides. Okay, and squaring both sides gives us 0 0.13052 is equal to 0 
divided by g. Lastly, we'll move our g by multiplying to the other side um, and then divide by our 0 0.13052, giving us a gravitational constant on Mars of about 3.83 meters per second squared.